Generally, there are four different kinds of features you can create at the assembly level. You can make datum features like planes and axes and sketches. You can make assembly level features like holes and cuts, in other words, extrudes and revolves. You can also create non-solid features like surfaces. Maybe you're going to create a boundary blend. And if you go to applications welding, you can create welds in your assembly. Now, generally, features at the assembly level can't add mass. Welds can, but your datum features and your non-solid surfaces, those are going to be zero mass. And your assembly level features like holes, extrudes, revolves, and so forth, so forth are going to remove material from your model. Let's take a look at how to create an assembly level feature like a hole. I will click on the hole tool and I will locate the hole in the model for this surface that I am going to locate it. Uh, let's use like a diameter dimensioning scheme. Go to placement tab. Oops, let's change this to diameter and change my different dimensions, zero degrees. And for this, let's make it 264, diameter of 10 is good. And for the depth, I'm going to choose through all. And that way I have to find my assembly level feature. The reason that you would do this is that you're trying to represent in the real world a situation in which you would match drill or match cut some components when you put them together. Personally, I'm not a big fan of assembly level features. I feel that in a lot of situations, it could be solved by creating them at the part level with better tolerancing rather than expecting some kind of technician or assembler to perform the operation when you're actually building the machine. Let's take a look at how the dashboard for assembly level features is different than if you were creating them in the parts. For one thing, we have the intersection tab over here with a couple different options up top. And by default, when you go into here, your interface is going to be different than mine because of a couple configuration options. By default, automatic update will be checked. And you'll notice that when I selected that, it automatically selected the two components that are going to be intersected by the feature and it turned off this advanced intersection. Uh, if you have automatic update turned off, then you have the ability to turn on advanced intersection, but it's off by default. Let me hit the check mark and I'll show you those config options that control. I'll go to File Options Configuration Editor and first off, Auto Update Intersected Models. The default value for that is yes. I have it set to no, and in a moment I'll show you why. And Advanced Intersection, I have that set to yes because I like to have the different options available and we'll go through those as well. So let me click OK, and with this hole over here, maybe I'm gonna use it for mounting, so let's pattern it. And I'm gonna change the drop-down list from a dimension pattern to an axis pattern. Pick the axis that I want to use. By default, I'm getting four located 90 degrees apart. I'm gonna set the angular extent to 360, change the number of instances to eight, and there are a few that I don't want in here, so let's click the preview dots to turn off the ones that I do not want. That's good, hit the check mark. And now I have my pattern. I've got five different holes in the model here. So again, that is our assembly level feature. Let me go back to the hole over here. I'm gonna edit definition. And I'll show you what automatic update does. So you'll see right now there are two components in the list over here. Let's hit the check mark. And now what I'm going to do is assemble another one of these components in here. I'm gonna drag it so it would get intersected by the cut. So let's hit the assemble button. I happen to know the component number. And let me just drop it on the screen here. Use a 3D dragger to rotate it a little bit. And let's get rid of the component interface that it wants to use. 
line up a couple surfaces there and line up another couple of surfaces and get rid of the last constraint or last degree of freedom rather pick a couple surfaces here but let me go back to the distance constraint which I can access by clicking on in the screen Again, I want to drag it so that it would actually end up getting intersected by that assembly level feature let's just drag it down here to some value so I'll hit the check mark and I will drag this component so it appears above the hole in the model tree so now when I go back to the hole I can edit definition also if you right click on it you can get to the intersected components dialog box and you'll see with auto update before there are two components in there and by dragging this component below it in the model and above the feature in the model tree it automatically added that to the list of components and normally you might think hey that is a great idea awesome anytime that I have components in here they'll automatically be added here's where it can be a disadvantage let me click OK out of here and I'm going to edit definition of this component for its placement and let me click on the distance to activate it now I'm going to drag it so it appears above the feature in the model tree hit the check mark and let's go to edit definition this time so I can get to some of the other different options when I go to intersection you'll notice the component is still in the list and we get this error down at the bottom of the screen warning assembly cut is entirely outside the model the models unchanged with automatic update the component got added in here but due to a model change it still remains in the list even though it's not even being intersected and you're getting this warning now regarding this warning a lot of times you'll get this as a false positive and this is another one of those reasons that I don't like assembly level features the reason that you'll get this warning as a false positive is the way that Creo parametric calculates how or whether a component will be intersected is based on what's called the bounding box of the component not on the components actual geometry what I mean by the bounding box for this component over here Creo parametric puts a box around it that's just big enough to encompass the component and that's what it considers when evaluating this automatic intersection and because that you get a bunch of false positives you'll be regenerating the model and you'll see hey I got these assembly cut is entirely outside the model the models unchanged what the heck is causing that well it's automatic update in a lot of situations and that bounding box thing so my recommendation is turn off automatic update and here I have advanced intersection turned on let's take a look at those different options after we update the list here so we know that the cut doesn't intersect this component anymore so we can right click on it and there are a few different options in here we will choose remove and that way we only have two components in the list and what I recommend is that if you make changes to the model add a definition of the assembly level feature and then hit this add intersected models and it will recalculate which components should actually be affected based on the shape of the feature and the depth option that you use and I'm gonna scroll over here to show you a couple other different things right now there are a couple of check boxes over here for feature properties and that deals with whether I'm making this cut displayed at the part level and if I make it displayed at the part level even though it's created at the assembly level I can use these different boxes in order to make them uh, visible at make the dimensions for the assembly level feature visible at the part level and so again if I right click on this I can choose part level for where it's going to be displayed and you'll notice that I might have changed the name of the component over here for this top component let's right click on it and we can choose part level 
so that it's displayed at the part level. And we can check the boxes now for feature properties. So let me hit the check mark. And it did some regeneration. And now if I open up this part over here, it's got the assembly level features. And you see in the model tree, we've got assembly hole listed in here. And if I click on it, I can hit the display button to see the different dimensions. That's what that feature property does in order to make them visible. All right, hop back over to the assembly. Let me turn off some of my datums because I don't need them anymore. Uh, so back over to the hole and let's edit definition once again. All right, so intersection, we've got advanced intersection over here. Next up, default display level. And from this drop down list, you can choose when you add more components to this list of intersected components, do, what level do you want the assembly level feature visible? You could set top level. In other words, you can see the assembly level feature in that new component in the assembly, but not at the part level. You have part level over here, and then you have select level. And that means that for when the component is added, you have to choose which level it's going to be. All right, another option that we have over here, add instances. And uh, when you have these displayed at top level, basically in the background, let me change this one, yeah, top level. Uh, when you choose add instances, what this will do is it'll add a family table instance uh, when you're displaying the feature in the model. I don't like this. Bad option. Hey, I try to stay away from family tables when I can. All right, there's another option over here, check geometry. And what that does is, in another video, I talked about model accuracy. Model accuracy deals with the smallest curve length that Creo Parametric is capable of seeing. If you're using the default relative accuracy, then models of different sizes will have different accuracy. So for example, you know, this part over here, it's much bigger than this part over here. And so they'll have slightly different accuracies that can result in errors when you are using these assembly level features. And so the check geometry option will help refine the geometry of the different assembly level features when they're generated to take into account those discrepancies in the accuracy. And here's the other option uh, for making the features uh, dimensions visible in the submodels. So that is how you create an assembly level feature. Let me hit the check mark to get out of here. And again, my recommendation, first off, avoid them if you can avoid doing them and make sure that you turn off that auto update option so that you don't have these components getting added and getting those unnecessary warnings in the message area. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded.